Greetings, friend. I will give you the secret to spying the hardest strategy in any Sudoku puzzle and why you need to know it to solve the green cell. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. Look here in block three. You might notice there's a two coming up, column seven, and this two cutting across row two. There's only two possibilities for two in block three. What I just did is called Snyder Notation. Anytime in a three by three block, you have two possibilities for a can it. You want to mark it in case you solve one of those cells, you can solve the other one right away. The idea here is we're going to pull information by finding limitations throughout this puzzle. We can do the same thing now in block seven using the threes. You got this three in row eight, this three coming down, two possibilities for a three in block seven. And now let's do some solving here. We got a four here. We have these two fours. Only place in block eight for a four is right there. Welcome to Smart Hobbies. If you are new, subscribe. Tap the bell if you want to turn your passing interest in Sudoku into a fun and enjoyable hobby. We can move on and do some more solving with the four here. We got these two fours and two spots for four in block five. And then you'll notice how this four cuts across. This four comes up. Got two possibilities for four in block one. And let's look at the fives now. We got these two fives. We'll mark the Snyder fives in block five. And then we'll look in block nine. You got this five and this five. Snyder fives here. A little bit of symmetry going on the way the fours and the fives kind of are dispersed throughout this puzzle. Now, let's look in block one here. You got these two fives. And you can put the fives right there. And then let's look now at the sixes. We'll get some solving done here. You got these two sixes in column seven and nine. You got this six right there. So that's going to be a six. And with these two sixes and this six, we can solve for six right here. And let's see what else we can do with the sixes. These two sixes and this six, we can solve for six in block two. With these two sixes and this six, solve for six here in block one, displacing that Snyder five. So we can immediately solve for the five right away and with these two sixes and these two we can solve for six the last six in block four i want to thank ashish kumar for providing me puzzles from his book enthralling sudoku for me to solve you can buy ashish's book through the link in the description below over 100 puzzles for you to solve classics and variants all right let's look at the eights you got these two eights i mean there's only one place for an eight in block three displacing that snyder two and now we can also do some marks for the eights because of this eight and this eight, two spots for an eight here in block five. And then with this eight cutting across and this eight coming up, we can solve for an eight right here. Give us two spots for the eight in row two. And then down here, because of these two eights, we have two possibilities for an eight in block eight. Okay. Now, let's see if we can find and solve in here, all right? We're looking for a 1. Excuse me, we got the 1. We need a 4, 7, and a 9. Well, I got a 9 and a 4 right here. That means this is a naked single 7. There's only possibility in this cell is a 7, which gives us a 4, 9, naked pair. Okay, so we know the green cell is either going to be a 4 or a 9. And we got to figure out which one it's going to be. And it does involve the hardest strategy needed for the Sudoku in order to figure this out. But I will help you get there. Now, because of some of the markings we've done here, let's check out. You got this nine cutting across and this nine coming down. Only one place for a nine in block six. And then we got two spots for a nine in block nine. All right. And then block five with these two nines, two spots for a nine here. So there's a lot of restrictions in block five but we can't quite make any solves based on just those restrictions. And we've now made one pass through this puzzle and we need to see if there's anything easy that we miss. I'll tell you, most solvers will waste too much time looking for advanced strategies before they solve all the easy cells. So let's look here in column two, for example. You have a two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. We're missing a one, three, and a five. Well, if you look over here, you'll notice the three and a five are right there. This actually has to be a one and then we can put a three five naked pair what's nice about the naked pair is now we're introducing a couple of buy value cells just like with this four nine and bvcs will link it to more advanced strategies so you do want to kind of look for that 
All right, after doing that, let's look at the twos. You got a limitation here with these twos, two possibilities for two, block nine, and then with the four, you have this four cutting across. Because we solved the two and an eight, there's only two possibilities for the four now in block three. So this is a pointing pair. It means the four has to be in block three and it's restricted to column seven. So you can't put a four anywhere else along column seven. Otherwise, you'd have no place to put a four in block three. So we know four can't be here because this four, four can't be here. We can solve for four in block six right there. And this is how far you're going to get with Snyder notation. Give me a thumbs up if you did make it this far. The secret to spying the hardest strategy in any Sudoku puzzle is to get to the spot where you understand the limitations and restrictions of the puzzle. That's where we are right now. Join the Smarty Party if you want to solve exclusive puzzles using strategies like the one I'm about to show you. You become a super smarty. I'll put your name on every video. Just click on the pin comment below to join now. So look across row six. This is where we need to focus our attention. Now there's only four cells filled in, a six, seven, eight, nine. They give us a one, two, three, four, and a five. So this is gonna be a little tricky to spot, but there's some restrictions here that we can take advantage of. You notice this cell, because of the one and five right there, eliminate a one and five. And then because of this three, we can eliminate a three from right here. Now, you see how this one covers both of these cells? Those can't be ones. We also have these two fives here. It means those can't be fives. This is kind of where the beauty is. And then you come over here, we have a two and a four that can't be there. I want you to look at these three cells right here. Okay? And you'll notice because of this four, we can eliminate a four. Two, three, and a four are limited to those three cells. It means is the two, three, and four, since they're the only three possibilities for three cells, they have to be in row six in those three cells. They cannot be here in this cell, and it cannot be here. So this is called a naked triple. Whenever you have a naked triple, you can eliminate those candidates from any other cell in the house, in this case, which is row six. This is the key to solving this puzzle. Another way to look at it is you could have spotted the one five is actually a, called a hidden pair. But I saw this two, three, four, and I wanted to share that with you because this is a little hard to find when you're looking in a row that has four or less cells filled out here. But you got to find this. And why is this the key? Because we now remove the four from this cell. And so what you'll notice is where can a four be now in column three? Can't be here because of this four. Can't be here anymore. And it can't be here because of this four. So this cell right here has to be a four. And since it's part of a naked pair, as soon as you saw this for a four, we know this cell is going to be a nine. If you find value in what I'm teaching you here, please consider buying me a coffee or just click on the super thanks here on YouTube. I'd really appreciate it. We can now take this one step further and look at row three. We got these two nines, means this cell has to be your nine, and then this cell is going to be a three, displacing that Snyder four. Okay, after solving that four, let's look here in block five. Because we put that nine there, we can remove a nine from here, it means we can solve this cell for a nine, displacing the Snyder five, displacing that Snyder eight. Made a lot of progress there, which means we can displace at Snyder 8 up there. After cleaning all that up, I think we can continue on with the 9s here. Okay, you have a 9 here and a 9 here. You have these two 9s. I mean, there's only one place for a 9 in block 8, which is going to allow us to displace that Snyder 9 right there. And with these two 9s, we can solve for 9 here in block 7. And we got all of the 9s cleaned up. Now let's look across row 8. Now you want to look where you have great restrictions. In this case, we have seven cells filled out. We're only missing a two and a seven. Well, I have a seven right here. It means this has to be the two. That has to be the seven. Displacing that Snyder two. Displacing this Snyder five. And now we have a nice full house within the block. Only one possibility left, which is going to be a one. We come up here. We notice we only need a one and a seven. So that's your one and that's your seven. We have another full house across here. It means we can solve this cell for a Three, which allows us to solve this cell for a two. Okay, and now we can keep going on up here and go, okay, I just don't have a seven right there. 
and we just need a one and a two for those two cells. All right, where else can we look? Well, this five is gonna allow us to solve for the three right there and the five right there. We'll move the three mark. And now with these two fives, we can solve for a five here, solve for a one right there. All right, and with these two ones and these two ones, we can solve for a one right here, creating another full house. I know with certainty I can solve this cell for a three and solve this cell for a seven. And now three's gotta be somewhere here in block five. So I'm gonna pull it over from block six, knowing this has to be the three now, displacing that Snyder four. All right, and with these two threes and this three, we know this cell is gonna be a three. This cell is gonna be a two. And since I just marked a two and a three, I can solve that for a four. All right, and now we got a seven here, because I didn't have a seven in block four. And we have another full house, meaning this has to be a two. And then I'm looking for a five and a seven. This five, I'm gonna pull over from block nine. I mean, that's a five and that's going to be your seven and now see these two sevens and this seven i always want to kind of do cross hatching to solve because cross hatching is the easiest for you to spot it's the quickest for you to spot versus looking at this whole full house and going okay that's got to be a three but if i see that and that's what i need to do i'll mark that and so we're looking for here an eight and a one well i have this eight right there so i know that's going to be your one displacing that snyder eight and now with this one i can disambiguate the two and the one Watch this next video to see what a locked triple is and how to solve those. I want to thank you so much for watching.